walk outside and had her hair blow dried and had her feet shaved and her nails done. So she's a little unhappy with me right now, aren't you? Huh? She knows something's up. So anyway, that's why she's panting. It's it's a lot of work on a poodle grooming them, uh, keeping up with their hair and all the prep work that goes in before a blow dry. So anyway, that's why she's panting. And we're in Florida, so the walk outside, making sure she was ready to go for a couple hours of grooming, um, got her a little hot. So for poodle fanciers out there, this is champion, international champion, Ziegfeld Harton, Rock My World. She finished her championship in three shows um, with three five-point majors. And the final five-point major was at the Alabama Poodle Club uh, over 17 females, which was really awesome, all as a puppy. And then she completed her grand championship just a few weeks later at the AKC National Championship Dog Show. She was given to me as a gift from her breeder. I didn't have to pay any money for her. And um, that was really awesome. Her breeder knew I'd take really good care of her. Which I do, she's my bed buddy. Yes, she is. Yeah, she is spayed, I don't breed her. Never have. She's about two years old. So the first thing I'm gonna do with her is get her ears out of the way, so I'm going to band her ears. She keeps her ears banded all the time because they get in her mouth and I like keeping long ears on her so I want to keep them out of the way and out of her mouth. I get the colored bands from Laney LTD. Uh, they have all kinds of color. It's the color coordinated canine. They have all kinds of colored uh, bands and wrappers and things for your dog. Um, whenever you band the ears, if you want to keep your ears banded, you always take a comb, slide it all the way through between the band and the ear. Make sure you don't have any ear leather into that area. Whenever you put a bow on a dog, you always want to do that too. All right, so the first trim we're going to do, and I really should go get the book. I'll be right back. So I have all the versions of this book, but I'm using the old, oldest one that I have, which is from 1970, because most of these are retro styles. So I'm using, stay. Well, this one is similar to it. We're going to do a Bolero, but this one is more of a New Yorker, but we're going to use a much more narrow pattern around the middle, because we're going to switch her to a Dutch trim. So, stand. So she's had a Dutch trim before and she kind of has the pattern here around the middle where I'm going to set it. So I'm going to use a 15 blade. And I want it behind the last rib and in front of the flank. And I like really sharp, clean lines. I'm gonna do her scissoring with this first pattern and then I'll switch her to the other patterns after that. She's quite hairy. I've been growing her out for this. I'm putting the pattern in against the grain. Stay. I've got her flank stretched back, so I'm not going to cut her flank.
Personally, I've always liked this trim with a bit more narrow of a pattern anyway. I've already shaved her feet and her face. Good girl. Let's do your belly. Come here. So for the neck, they get the band around the neck shaved. Her shoulder blade is right, the front of the shoulder blade's right there. So I'm going to stay just in front of that and go against the grain. I always leave a V at the back of the top knot so I don't have like a harsh line around the top knot. I like something to blend it down. Stay. Just balance it around the front in a straight line. Not going down into a point. I'm going to go to a 40 blade and just clean up around this V shape here so that it's a sharper line. And just clean it up lightly. more bands in her ears. They are still getting in her mouth. Yes, they are. It's not a treat. It's not a treat. No. No, it's not a treat. back over this with a 40 just to clean up the lines around the edges and I'll do that again as I go to finish her I'm often asked about this little clipper. It's really awesome. It's an Artero Spectra. It's a four in one, and it is an awesome little clipper. Very, very quiet. All right. So, if you notice in a lot of the retro styles, 
They are very poofy on the back end. They don't have as much angulation cut in as some of the um, newer trims. I'm gonna go a little bit in the middle. I'm gonna give her a little bit of angulation because I prefer angulation, but it does need a lot of hair to look pretty. So, where am I going to start? Let's see. I'm using um, Crown Royal spray in a mister bottle on her. The one that's for Poodle and Bichon Coats, I think it's number two. Oh, another thing I wanna do is right above her tail, I'm gonna give her a little bit of a V here. just to make it more fancy. She really doesn't need it to make her tail look more high set because her tail's really high set, but still looks pretty on this trim because she has a V coming down here, so I'm making a V come up here. Good girl. All right. So I'm going to start by scissoring around the pattern. Stay. She just grew in enough hair up top here from her Dutch trim last time to allow me to put this trim on her. It's hard to do this where you can actually see. Get her ears up here. I want to keep some roundness underneath. It used to be for certification, you had to put a puppy trim on a dog, on a poodle, and then go back and put a pattern trim, but they don't do that anymore. Now they're doing more of the German trims and all for certification. But I really think for poodles, you should know how to do the pattern trims. I'm gonna keep her rounded out a bit in the front. 
hard to scissor her in that way. I'm going to turn her a bit. I'm going to keep her rounded out a bit here. Just bring it in a little for the angulation. These trims should be quite full. Take this pad off the table because it's hard to clean my table off with this. I don't think she'll be slip sliding. That's a good girl. That's better, huh? Yes, that's better. All right. Back here. You stand here so people can see. Try to keep my arm out of the way. Back to work. Back to work. Okay. Stand. Stay. When I'm scissoring around these edges, I'm keeping my scissors straight up, not angled in or out, because I want sharp, straight up lines, keeping more fullness. Excuse me. I usually take the underside to meet the elbow, unless they have really bad elbows.
this area right above the tail where I shaved in the V. I'm going to accentuate that. front legs have been growing out forever. So they need a little bit of work, don't they? Yeah. In about a month, she's going to need her teeth cleaned. So next month I will do some of the trims that involve pom-poms because the vet always shaves a piece anyway. So it'll be a good time to do those trims. She has one of those super soft coats that shows every line, every scissor mark. And this one, right there, stay. You are being so fidgety.
What do you think I'm trying to do, huh? I don't know, but I never get a haircut this time of day. I always get my haircut at night. For me personally, I always like this back part a little shorter than the front part. I think it looks prettier, gives them more style. Gives them kind of a slope upward. So when I go to set the other patterns, it won't take as long because I'm not having to do all the scissoring. So no matter what kind of trim I'm putting on a dog, I always, will you stop? I'm always trying to uh, achieve certain things in the look. So you can see where the back of her neck is, I always try to drop the back of the front leg in that same spot. So if it's like a Bichon and they have a full coat coming out to here, I drop it further back so that you can keep that line straight. I try to get some angulation here on the shoulder. I try to get a little bit of angle there for natural shoulder angle, a little bit of point of chest here. So I try to tie those things in so a dog always has that that show quality look about them. If you go through the book, the notes from the grooming table, you'll always see it. You can take a line and drop it straight from the back of the neck down the to the back of the front leg. You can always take, stand, say if the tail's up, you can always take this area and drop it down straight to the front of the foot. There are certain lines that you should always pay attention to and try to keep. And knowing the breed standard for each breed that you work on is always important so that you know what their shoulder angles should look like, what their tail should look like, and you try to bring all that about with the grooming. My goal is to keep her quite full and rounded. Good girl. Okay, come on. Come on, lighten up, baby. turn her at this angle so I can get the scissoring good. I'm sorry if you can't see it good. I 
I ordered one of those Foxy Roxy um, camera holders to hold it right in front of my face so you can see exactly what I'm doing. It was supposed to be in yesterday, but it didn't show up. So I'm using my curves backwards to set this point of shoulder into the front and dropping it down into the leg. I think with this first trim, I'm going to get the scissoring pretty good, and then I will come back as I do each one and just keep tightening it up. For me, when I'm scissoring in angulation, I want to see angulation from no matter which direction I'm looking at the dog. So whether it's from the front, the side, the back, no matter where I'm at, I want to see it. So I always angle my scissoring around to the front so that it shows that.
All right, you. No matter what I do with her, she always ends up facing this way. She wants to be at this end of the table no matter what. Don't you? She drives me crazy with that. You do. I generally try to keep my bevels on my feet down low so I don't scissor them up tight up here even though they're trimmed up tighter I kind of bend the foot and just get enough of this for some roundness without going up too tight This little dog has the best knees I've ever seen on a toy poodle. I never actually had them graded because I didn't plan on breeding her, but um, they are good. You stop shifting. Thank you. She constantly tippy taps. Constantly. Just tip, 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 tip. Tip, 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 tip. I don't think her feet ever stay still. Even when she free stacks, she's like tapping her feet. Always. When she wants a treat, tapping her feet. <laughs> tap, 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 tap. to do this with you being able to see. Turn this way. 
Wait. Stand. Stand. Such a toy poodle. So when I was growing up, we always referred to this as the belt trim. But I think technically it's known as the bolero. good enough on the scissoring for this phase of it but you can see she has a stand stand stay she has a belt around the middle one around the neck one around the tail and if she is this way you sit sit baby no She's like, no, I'm supposed to stand on the table. Sit. Stay. So you can see where the pattern is set. And it just looks like she has on a shirt and pants. Good girl. So I'm going to put her on the floor while I find the next one. Let her shake off. So next, we are going to do... So it'll be the Chicago Dutch. So we'll take this trim and just add in the line going down the back part. All right, B. Come here. Good girl. <clears throat> Good girl. Yes, Chicago. Yes, Chicago. So to do that one, I'm going to use a little blade. 7 8 blade comes in handy for that. Stay. I'm going to take it straight down to the middle of the tail. First, I'm going to go with the grain. And then against the grain. And right now, rather than rounding out the corners, which I would normally do, I'm going to leave them sharper because I'm going to do the crisscross stitch next. So I'm going to comb this hair off over to the side. 
and scissor straight up with my scissors straight up and down. Look over there. Thank you. She's like, what are you doing to me? You're doing weird things I've never had done before. Poodles pick up on every single cue. If you do something different, they're like, uh-oh, what's wrong? What's happening? Like I said, she has a super soft coat. Takes a lot of scissoring to get her really smooth. And then every time you touch it, it looks like it's out of whack again. Can you sit? Sit. Good girl. So you can see we have now she has a line straight down the middle here and around the middle here for the Chicago Dutch. Alright, so now you go down here and shake off again. Give her a break. We will move on to the crisscross Dutch. Crisscross Dutch has sharper lines, which is why when I did the last one, I left it sharper. So we're going to do this one. Come here, baby. Thank you. That's my pretty girl. So we're going to take the 7 8 blade again and go straight up the middle between the shoulder blades and come down and meet the line at the back. Try to keep it balanced. Okay. important to have the dog stand in four square. Now I'm going to go back and do it against the grain. Get her standing right first. Otherwise your line will count, come out crooked.
And you can see when you clip it in, you still can't see the line too good. And that's why you really have to go in and sharpen it up with the scissors. So I take my scissors straight up and down, not angled side to side. Straight up. This is all so weird. Then I'm going to take my 40 blade and come along the edges and sharpen all this up. Make sure those lines are really crisp. And I'm just taking it straight in and touching. I'm not like digging in or anything. I'm just light, light touch. Just cleaning it up. And then because this is a crisscross stitch, I'm gonna sharpen the corners, make them look nice and clean and straight. Make sure all the lines match from front to back and side to side. I usually never let my dog sleep in bed with me, but this little dog has wiggled her way right up there. She absolutely will not let me lay down in bed without her being in bed with me. I never like to let my dogs do that, but she does. It all started from when she got spayed she, the vet messed up in her spay and didn't put the last stitch in right, which caused all her intestines to come, not outside, but from the stitching above to the stitching below, and they all seeped in, and it, she was in a lot of pain that night, and had to go back and be put back under anesthesia and fixed the next day, which really sucked, but, um, I slept, I put a pad down on the floor and I slept on the floor with her so that she would not, you know, come into bed with me. And so I slept with her instead. And she just decided from then on, oh, I'm supposed to sleep with you. So, yeah, that's how that got started. All right, so I'm keeping sharp lines. I'm trying not to round it out too much. But I like it better rounded. So when we do the next judge, we will. All right, so. Just to give you a basic idea here, without getting too carried away. you can go back in and clean this all up better but that's crisscross touch all right now we are going to move on stay So this is another variation, but we can't do it because we started with the Chicago Dutch, but you can leave the back full and trim the line up the middle. It's 
So this is the Dutch trim. So now we're going to angle off the corners because the last one was a crisscross Dutch. And actually I was going to, I miss, missed one. I was going to do the diamond Dutch, but that should have been done before any lines were added in. So we're, we'll just skip and do this one. So we're just gonna do the variation where the crisscross Dutch was done. And these lines are real sharp. We're gonna now take those off more in a diamond pattern. So I'm just gonna take the corners off. And the belt around the middle needs to be widened now. For this trim. Here, baby. Stand. So I'm just going to widen this out a bit. The one I'm putting her in now is, is my favorite trim on her. It looks really pretty on her. It's her signature look. I'm doing this right now with the 15 against. And I'll go ahead and tighten up the edges with a 40. And if I were going to do the diamond dutch, what I would have done is left this whole middle section full and done this belt around the middle and then the pattern I'm doing here with the wider pattern and just like a diamond shape in the back. Maybe I'll grow her out and do that one at a later date. So I'm rounding these edges up. in with the 40 and tighten it. So I'm taking my clipper straight in with a light touch and sharpening up the edges. Getting it really clean. The whole secret to pattern trims is really crisp clipper work. And since she's no longer in the crisscross Dutch, I'm gonna angle these areas around the tail out a little bit more too. And on the shoulders, just round out those corners. Cause this trim is more round. Right. Do a little bit more on your scissor work. It's all right, you're fine. You're fine, baby.
So I'm going to round these edges. like standing this way. Stay. Go shake off. Good girl. It's okay. All right. So as you can see, this one's more rounded. All the edges are full and kind of circle-like. Sit. And the patterns in here are also more rounded, as well as when it comes into the neck, it's more rounded. So now, we're going to go into the Royal Dutch, which has a much wider band around the middle. So that's this one. We're not going to do the tassel ears, but we're going to widen that band. Baby, let's do another one. I'm going to use the 15 for this as well. Stand straight.
So this one is nice because it has less hair. A little less upkeep. I want the fullness I'm not going to comb it straight back and cut it but I'm going to comb it up and out and back because if you comb it straight back and try to cut it then you end up with it being too short as it comes back into the full part use my curved scissors and angle it down and around So that you end up with a nice wide band. This is a very feminine trim. Stay. Good girl. My favorite thing about these trims is that you can have your shaved neck, which is really, really nice for fancy collars. If you have a full neck on a dog, then the fancy collars, you really can't see them too good. And it kind of mats the hair. A lot of times when I've seen groomers do these trims, they tend to shave the chest. Shaving the chest is a no-no. You ruin a lot of the look of the dog if you shave the chest. In my opinion. Stay. My husband's gonna be like, what did you do to her? <laughs> Cause he's never seen her with this pattern. And for this one, the scissoring is gonna go a little shorter. My mother started her grooming shop in 1969 and had her own poodles for years before that that she always had trims on. And in the 60s and 70s, you never saw a poodle without one of these pattern trims, whether male or female. The males almost always had a big old donut mustache with it.
but this was the in style for dogs then. made the mistake of picking up her leg to scissor it when I did this part and I messed it up. Sharpen up the edges here. Good girl. Good girl. So I'm going to put it back on a 40 to sharpen it up. Come over here and stand. You sit. Good girl. So this one has a much wider middle and narrow down through the, the center of the back and wider and band in the loin area. Stay. So like I said, these look really cute with their necklaces. Actually needs to be up where her shaved part is. So that you can accentuate the shaved areas with their collars. And that way it rests right on where it's shaved. Looks pretty. All right, let's take your bands out. Nobody ever gets to see her with her ears down because her ears are always banded. Because she's always got them in her mouth. Don't you? Always, always. Scissor your top knot. Over here.
So for my top knots, I like quite a bit of overhang over the eyes. Because I think it makes her expression prettier. Especially when they have a neck band around the neck because with the neck band, you need to bring the top knot more forward. And if you take it short here and short here, it looks really tiny. This trim is really easy to maintain. which is one of the reasons why I like it. And it's very girly. And I like, I like my girls to look like girls. And my boys to look like boys. Another reason why I like the overhang over the eyes is because, especially with these poodles with the really fine hair, if you leave too tall of a top knot, it splits down the middle pretty quickly. And most clients don't like that. I do my dogs all the time so I can leave a bit of height because I'm always tidying them up. But when you leave the overhang over the eye, you can actually make them look like they have more top knot and still get it short enough for the client to not think it's falling down too quickly. So by building it out on the side and out on the front, you can actually take it shorter up top and still have a pretty top knot. I love these curved shears. I got them from Zolita. Very nice. She has a super curve too, which I wanna get. Ordering these was actually an accident. I meant to order the straights and get two pair and I ended up with two pair of curves. So, which I really don't need two pair of curves because I hardly ever use them. So last time I did BB, I screwed up her tail. So any of my customers that think I screw up their dogs, I screw up mine too, all the time. It just, it's, it's always a constant work of art every time you do a dog and it's ever changing. But BB has a super gay tail. So she holds it right up on her back all the time. Even when she's laying down, her tail is up. So, the trick to grooming these tails is taking them short here and longer here. But BB actually needs a super, super, super full tail in order for it to work. And even though you could, it looks like right now she's got a lot of hair there, it's not nearly enough for her. It has to be really wide. So in order to hide her gay tail, make it look like a normal tail. So, as you can see, it doesn't look like it should be a problem, but it is. So I'm hardly gonna touch it today because I did take it too short last time. So I can scissor the band here, but not here. Here, this has to grow way down and real long in order for it to look like a correct tail. So even though I said she's an international champion and a grand ch AKC grand champion, she does have a fault. All dogs have faults. It's just how well you can disguise them. So, 
Gonna put her tail where it goes when she's happy, which is way up here. So what she really needs is more height right here. So what I'm gonna do is take this way down low. And then with her tail where I want it, stay. I'm going to take a bunch of this off and actually try to get a point up top. And maybe that'll fix what I did last time. So I actually took it with a 40 blade on the tip of her tail here to get it as close as I could. So this part's just corrective grooming to make it look better. So I want the longest hair here and here. 